Camera profiles essentially change the way that On1 reads your raw data. You can do that by going over to develop, underneath camera profile, you can hit this little drop down arrow. And if you hover over the first one, which is On1 standard, and then you use your down arrow keys, you can filter through all of these and see what impact it has on your image. Now, what I would recommend you do is you have your histogram open on your image. So that way you can see what this is doing to your overall exposure of your image and if that's desirable. Now, this is only eligible on raw images or DNG files. If you shot JPEG, TIFF, or PNG, or you are editing a JPEG, TIFF, or PNG, you're not gonna have this option. There's no wrong answer on which option to select here. Just choose the one that works for your style and inspires you and then go from there. If you want something a little bit more detailed, check the description box below. I have a video talking about camera profiles. If On1 has camera profiles for your camera, and the version that I'm using here is 22.5 or 2022.5, and this was shot on a Canon EOS R6, they just updated the program to have the camera profiles for the Canon EOS R6, so now those are there. But for this demonstration, I'm gonna select landscape. So number two, this is actually one of the simplest things that you can do on your photo, which is click AI auto or AI match. Now, you're only going to get the AI match if you are working on a raw photo, which I am. If you're working on a JPEG or a PNG or TIFF, you'll only have AI auto. By clicking that, on one's going to try to expose your image. This could be great for bringing out some inspiration in the direction you want to go of your image. If it's too strong, you can just pull back on this auto uh, slider here and you can make adjustments. If you decide to start changing something down here, so let's say I wanna reduce the highlights in the overall image. Notice that I no longer have the ability to drag my auto slider. The only way that I can get back to being able to drag this auto slider is by hitting AI auto again, because as soon as it moves me into manual, I lose that capability. Now, this is also a good way of jumping between a AI auto and manual and getting different looks. So if I leave this on manual, notice that my highlights are at negative 56. If I come to AI auto, it moves my highlights to negative eight. But as soon as I go back to manual, look at that. I go right back to negative 56. And this holds true for all of the parameters that AI Auto would impact. Now, AI Match is another really cool tool. And this is going to do its best to match the JPEG image that was embedded in the file when I took it on my camera. I shoot RAW and JPEG, so if you wanted the JPEG exposure, then you might want to go with the JPEG, but you can also use AI Match just to get you started and start moving you in that right direction. But take note that if you move the auto slider at any point, it does reset or it holds the same value that it was previously. So if it looks too, if it's not to your liking, then again, you can just drag this around and this is going to proportionately move all the sliders for your two AI options available. And again, as you work with this, pay attention to your histogram because that does matter and you wanna make sure that you're exposing the image the way that you want to. So with number three, we're gonna go into our effects module here and we're going to add a filter and we're gonna add a LUT filter. A LUT stands for lookup table. This is just a really quick way to get a color grade or to change the color response in your image and give it a, a different look, all right? This can be a really cool way of adding a little bit of effect and interest to your image. So the way this filter works is you'll click on category and you can select whichever category you wanna work in. On one comes with some default categories that are stock to the software that everyone gets. And then you can even add in your own LUTs or you can have the downloaded LUTs from other uh, packages. For this example, I'm just gonna show you using one of the color grade LUTs here. And then inside of the color grade option, I have a few different 
styles. Now, again, just like I showed you before, if you hover over the first one and then you use your down arrow on your keyboard, you can just start to cycle through these until you find one that you like. I actually like this one. Once you find it, hit return or enter and it will commit that to your image. You have a few options down here, but you just have to play around with that until your heart's content. I'm not gonna go too deep into that for this particular video, but if that's something you wanna hear about or, or see more uh, information on, drop a comment down below. Let me know that you want me to talk about the LUT filter and I will absolutely make that video for you. If this effect is too strong, don't forget you have your opacity slider. You can blend in the color to your heart's content or until it makes the aesthetic that you're going for. So number four, we're gonna add a blend mode to our image. If you hit the gear icon anywhere in On One Photo Raw, they're located in three different places. The first place is gonna be right here inside of your filter tab. The second place or your local adjustments, local adjustments have uh, the gear icon as well, just like so. Come back to effects. You also have on your entire layer stack, you have a gear icon, so you get an opportunity to select your blend mode. And then the last one is actually going to be in your layers option here. And it's right there. So you can change the blend mode. Those are the places where your gear icon is. Now, for today's purpose, we're only going to look at the filter because if you have a blend option for all of your filters and your local adjustments. Think about the power that you have to create something really unique and cool. And it's okay if you don't understand what these things are doing. The goal here is just to get you inspired to start editing your image. So once you click the gear icon, you'll click on the drop down where it says normal. And it's gonna give you a lot of options. And again, just using your down arrow, you can just filter through here and see what it's doing to the image over on the left. As you go through, you find one that works for whatever inspires you for the moment. Like pin light actually looks really cool with this particular light. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit return or enter to commit that. And then I can turn it off and turn it on and see that it's really just desaturating the overall image. Now, if that is, again, way too much for me, all I have to do is pull back on this. And I can blend that in until I get the image the way that I want it to look. So don't discredit the fact that you have these blend options available to you. And there's a lot of them. So explore them. Don't be intimidated by them. And they're a really cool way of adding in a little bit of flair to your image that you may not really pick up on if you didn't explore the options that are available. Now, I will share with you some of my go-to options. The first one is gonna be darken, multiply, lighten, screen, overlay, soft light, color, and luminosity. Now, for this image, I actually like pin light and what it's doing to the photo. But those are my go-tos, and those are probably some really good ones to start interacting with your image to see how it impacts your photo. The fifth tip that I'll share with you is adding an HDR filter. So we're going to go to Add Filter and then hit HDR Look. This is going to give us a dialog box. Now, I want to give a quick disclaimer that HDR photos get a bad rap, and there could be some truth to that, but what I'm trying to get you to see is that you can use this filter to edit your photo in a unique way. That's it. Use it as sparingly or as much as you would like. Again, I recommend that you have your histogram open so that way you can tell what's happening to your image. Now, what I would recommend doing with this is pulling down on the detail. Sometimes I think the HDR, it just adds way too much detail. Now you can pull way too far. So 
Make it applicable for your image. And there's no need to be at 100% when you start pulling out the detail. We're not talking about sharpening here. We're just talking about the overall look of the image. So I think it makes sense to be at a fit um, or whatever is appropriate for you. Now, what you can play around with is the compression slider. Now, the compression slider is really cool and it doesn't even matter what it's technically doing, all right? The goal here is just to get you inspired to start moving in a direction to editing your photos. So don't worry about what it is technically doing. Let's just go ahead and use the slider to get a look that you like. And once you get one, you can stop it right there. Now, if the image becomes a little too bright, well, you have highlight control here. And I'm seeing on these leaves right here, we'll just go ahead and click there, pull that over, and there, there is just way too bright on those leaves. I don't know if it's coming through on the YouTube compression, but what I'm gonna do is just pull down on these highlights until I feel comfortable with the way that those look. Now, I can click back, and I think that looks pretty good. Now, I can also impact my shadows, and this is where you start to get that dimension in your image. Now, a lot of people, they like to pull down the highlights and open up the shadows and call that HDR. If that's what you want to do, then go for it. But if you're looking for inspiration, maybe try something that brings more interest to your primary subject. Really, that's what you should be doing. So I'm going to pull this down and I'll pull it to about there. And then one of the other reasons why I really like the HDR filter is you have these color controls almost where I can add some vibrance to the image, make it a little bit more warmth, right, or vibrant. Uh, but I also can impact the, I can add a glow filter and then I can even grunge it up a little bit which makes it darker, but a little bit more uh, gritty. Now for this image, I don't think that's working, but this is a really cool tool to use in order to develop something. Now, combining this with the last option that I shared with you, you can click on your gear icon and then click on the drop down and cycle through until you find something that looks really cool. Like Lighten looks like it works pretty good. Screen is okay. Overlay is too much. Soft light is just not a difference maker. And then we got saturation and color, which aren't going to really do much of anything. But we got luminosity. So I think I'm going to go with, I think I'll go with lighten on this particular one. And then we can turn that off and turn it back on. And we now have a photo that went from this, which is a little dull and it's not very uh, punchy or lifelike to this, which is a little bit more punchy, more interesting, and hopefully gives you an idea of where you can go with editing this photo a little bit further, either in the local adjustments or in the effects. Now, if you wanna learn more about how the effect stacks work, then click the video at the top of the screen. And if you wanna see more photo editing tutorials, click the video at the bottom of the screen. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Till next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating.